Hi folks, hope you're doing well. This one we'll be looking at the word should not. Or two words shouldn't. Yeah. One word shouldn't, but in two words should not. In John 3 16. Because the reality is God knew human nature and God knew he had to make it so easy, so simple. that basically heaven was there for every single human being, every single person. That's why John 3.16 says, and I always wondered, does it really say that? And now I understand, yes, it does. That those who believe in him should not perish. It doesn't say will not. It doesn't say shall not. It says should not perish. Why? Why should not, what it says? It can't be will not, it can't be shall not, it has to be should not. The reason why it has to be should not perish is because if it says will not and one person does perish, then that's a lie. If it says shall not and one person does perish, then that's a lie. It has to say should not because that would be true. That's basically saying You'd have to be basically insane to end up in hell. You'd have to be that incredibly brainlessly stupid to end up in hell. Right? You would have to give your Christianity over to church. That's what you call brainlessly stupid. To stop thinking about your walk with God as your walk with God. See what crossed my mind the other day, and it is, again, it's crossed my mind before, is that it's obvious, absolutely obvious. If any church was functioning correctly, right? If the people in that church are not learning and not growing, if, for example, and I've given this example, if whether the River Church or the Community Church of God, the Pentecostal Church, just down the road from me, in Elgin, if either of those churches understood, even slightly, their ministers, their people in charge, would be sacked. Would have been sacked within six months. They wouldn't still be there now. Certainly, anyone knowing, understanding that Mrs. B, when she complained about seeing me in that church and the pastor's response was to ban me from that church, immediately he should have been fired. On the spot. On this spot, he should have been fired. That was a teaching opportunity and he failed to teach. Jeff Oakes, again, and the associate pastor. Instead of banning someone from all your events because you say something, well, basically, as I say, um, it was in this, um, the final straw for that church, for the River Church, where I was concerned. It was the Tuesday coffee lunchtime thing, where you go for your tea, coffee, cake, that sort of thing, yeah? A woman was talking to other women. They were talking partly about um, the Sam Smith, the singer, and talking about his nature and you know, what darkness that man is in and you know, he's chosen all of that, worshipping the devil, etc, etc, etc. And this woman said something about, well, She's covered by God in some way. And I, all I said was, um, I don't think what you said is right. Can you explain? She went to the, to the associate pastor and complained. Now, I could have said so much more. I could have said, excuse me, what on earth are you doing talking about Sam Smith in that way? That man is messed up. 
But things have happened in his life that have made him the way he is. Could I could have been a lot harsher on him, but I was not. I wasn't very harsh on this woman at all. She goes and complains. The associate pastor says, well, from now, you're banned from any, all and any activity that we do as a church. Now, that would come from who? Jeff Oaks. It's cowardice. That's what I said all along. It is cowardice. Because, as, look, in any democratic nation, if they have an education system, if the children are failing to learn, the teacher will get sacked. That's the reality. The teacher will get sacked. And yet in church, they don't give a shit about learning. They don't give a shit about walking according to his will or his ways. They could not care less. And that's why, as I say, those pastors are leading the people in those churches to an eternity in hell because they don't care. They have given their Christianity over to the church. And they don't care whether things are moving forward or whether they're learning or whether they're growing. Because, as I said, I understand it. Learning and growing... Is difficult. If you're a child in school, go and speak to children in school. It's difficult. For most children, some children learn really well, but most know it's a pain in the ass. School, if they could actually leave school, they would. So learning, being told you're wrong, is not an easy thing. But... If we start with a deluded understanding of where we are, if we start with a deluded understanding such as there has been in church, that once saved, always saved. If in church we don't talk about what happens when you don't bear fruit. If in church we're not prepared to examine fruit. All of these things is why people do perish. All of these things is why people do actually end up going to hell. God, I mean, again, to me, it's it's so blinking simple. When I first, 1994, July 23rd, when I was first baptised, I understood that before that day, I was destined to an eternity in hell. I was taught that. I understood that. That was there. Because that was there, that was always that thought in my head that, hold it, am I still destined for that? Yeah, what according to his word is the evidence of that I'm not? Most people in church don't ask that question. They don't. It's a question that every single believer should be asking. But when you're in a pattern, in a way of life, where you're choosing to ignore anything that talks about consequences... You are open to the biggest of those consequences. You are making yourself open to the biggest of those consequences. Now, as I say, yeah. If a teacher in a worldly system would be fired for not teaching, how on earth is it easier... For a teacher of spiritual ways to not do their job and never face a sack.
to me, it, look, Manuel was in that church, the community church of God, Pentecostal church, for 10 years. They had 10 annual meetings discussing how well that church was doing. And they kept him on every time. So again, the leadership of that church should be sacked. Every single one of them should be told to step down. Anyone involved in the leadership at that point in time should be told to step down because you did a terrible bloody job. You didn't examine. You didn't care. You cared more about not offending people than you cared about where people's destination is. As I say, goodness sake, people have got to wake up to the fact that if after they die, they wake up in hell, they're going to be a damn sight more bloody offended than they are that I've used a couple of swear words in this video. Right? I don't care how offended you are about that. Jeff Oaks was offended. In the video that I talked about that man preaching on that Sunday when Jeff went to get his wife from America. Yeah. Yeah. I used swear words at that point in time in that video. And Jeff Oates was far more offended by the swear words than by the fact that he had basically told this man who was nowhere near prepared to bring the message on that day. He, Jeff Oakes was telling the people of that church, this is what you are worth. Nothing. You're worth this person who has no idea what he's talking about. He didn't find any of that to be offensive. No. He didn't find it offensive that a man in that church who'd been in the church for years and years and years and years and years was saying that Barabbas should have been crucified and the Jews should have set Yeshua free. He didn't find it offensive that this man was saying that we shouldn't receive that forgiveness. And that all of God's work should have been undone because he wasn't guilty. This man didn't have a clue what he was talking about. And he didn't find it offensive that that man was saying that. I did. I found it incredibly offensive. That that man was saying what he was saying. In that church. And the people in that church were being told. This is what you're worth. Because this is the point. If you are in a church. What you put forward is you telling these people, this is what you're worth. If you prepare, you practice, and you present the message and make it perfected, but it's of this world, then again, you're telling people, this is what you're worth. I practiced it. I didn't wait on God. I did it according to the world. Because I want you to be impressed with me. And this is what you're worth. Yeah. The problem is all of that offends me. Because how are you saying. That this is what the people of God. Are worth. The people that Yeshua gave his life for. You're saying that this is all they're worth. By what you're doing. The whole point of saying. We'd rather be careful not to offend you. Than help you to deal with the issues that could lead you to hell. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Folks. Mm.
you have to understand to take your relationship with God personally and deal with it personally do not hand it over to a group of people that's why I say if you see bad fruit get out of there don't stay in a place where you see bad fruit doesn't mean you can't go back but you know get out Yeah, you know, if Yeshua said a bad tree can never produce good fruit and a good fruit can never produce bad fruit, if what you're seeing there is bad fruit, it means it can't be a good tree. That's his words. So there you go. You take care. God bless.